Let me begin by posing a question to Dr. Larson. Sir, may I ask you how serious you consider to be the rise of right-wing extremist groups? After seeing this film, I considered it a lot more serious than I even did before I saw it. Why do you say that, sir? Well, I have never had the privilege of seeing a John Birch Society meeting at first hand before. And if someone had told me, I uh, really couldn't have believed it. I feel as though I've come out of a totally different planet. I mm -hmm. see things being stated as facts that bear no relationship to the facts at all. We, we set up this National Council for Civic Responsibility in order to expose extremism in positions, extremism in methods. But uh, if we had worked for years, we couldn't have produced a footage of film that would more eloquently show what the problem is and what the evil is that we're trying to combat. I'd like to uh, illustrate this by just taking one simple question of substantive fact and putting it to my colleagues here on the other side who represent the John Birch Society once and for all to see whether we can get at what is true and what is false. I'm not talking about opinion now. Some things in American political discussion are matters of opinion. Some people think democracy is the best form of government for us. Mr. Welch, the founder of the John Birch Society, thinks democracy is a fraud and has said so in print. That's a matter of opinion, I suppose. But now let's talk about a matter of fact. The United Nations, I jotted down, I never saw this film before this moment, I jotted down specific statements of fact about the United Nations that are not distortions, they are not half-truths. To call them half-truths is to give them 50% more credit for truth than they contain. They are complete untruths. It was stated in this open meeting that the United Nations was conceived by the communists. This is not true. The United Nations was conceived in 1943 at Dumbarton Oaks by an American committee appointed by Cordell Hull. It was said it was originated by communists. This is not true. It was originated in San Francisco in 1945 by a large group of about 50 some nations. It was said that it was used to further communist aims. Now this is the most Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass, upside down, reverse of the truth that I have ever heard stated in a comparable setting. The fact of the matter is, and it can be documented by official records down to the ground, the Soviet Union has never won and the United States has never lost on any major issue involving its interests where they have been pitted on opposite sides of the question. I'll say that again. The Soviet Union has never won. The United States has never lost on any major issue in which the Soviet Union has tried to get something done in the United Nations or where their interests have been pitted, pitted against each other. Now, I don't ask you to take that necessarily just on my uh, say-so. But I have a research center, I think the largest research center in the world, at Duke University, dealing with the United Nations affairs. We study every vote that's taken in the United Nations year after year. For example, in the 16th General Assembly, there were 62 resolutions. The United States abstained in four. As for the remaining 58, the United States was on the successful majority side in 55. That's 55 out of 58. That's typical, year after year. As to the 17th General Assembly, I won't give, go on with statistics for all these, but Senators Gore and Alec reported to the Senate Committee as follows. The United States maintained its record of never having lost a UN vote of vital importance to its national security interests. This is the official senatorial report on the way the United States is doing in the UN. Now, not only has the Soviet Union not won, it has been consistently condemned, censured, clobbered, defeated in vote after vote. The 50 megaton bomb vote, the Tibet vote, the Korea vote, the Hungary resolution, the resolution trying to condemn Hammarskjöld, the Cuba resolution trying to condemn us, the, Cuba, uh, the Hong Kong refugee resolution, the, refu uh, the uh, expropriation resolution the uh, Congo expenses and Middle East expenses resolution on which they were severely defeated. 
repeated votes on the ceding of communist China, the rejection of the Troika, the uh, vote on the United Nations bond issue, and all down the line, it's, it's almost monotonous. The Soviet Union gets defeated time after time. And how out of this anybody with this uh, record available as a simple matter of official record, how anybody comes to the conclusion that the, the uh, Soviet Union uses the United Nations to uh, further its interest, it's just, uh, it's just beyond the realm of a human rational mind to conceive. Now, now I may turn for a moment, sir, without interrupting Dr. Larson, to Mr. Forster and Mr. Epstein. Now, you've heard uh, Dr. Larson's uh, criticism in terms of fact of uh, certain allegations of the uh, John Birch Society. You gentlemen wrote the book uh, together, Danger on the Right. Uh, what did you see uh, in the John Birch Society and related organizations, uh, similar organizations, that made you decide that uh, you should write this book. Why the need for this book? Is the John Birch Society or right-wing extremist groups uh, th that strong a force within our society today, Mr. Foster? Well, we in the last year a proliferation of right-wing organizational life that begins to give it a serious evil impact on the American scene that justified the exposure that we are hoping a danger on the right gives to this phenomenon. But uh, I must uh, comment that I found it as difficult as Dr. Larson did to come back to the real world after the unrealism of 20 minutes of a John Birch Society meeting. He talked in depth about the lie they make of the United Nations. I noticed that uh, Mr. Bannis, who chaired the meeting, said that the major tool, indeed the only tool of the John Birch Society is truth. And then I began to jot down as they talked some of their kinds of truths. You mentioned, I think, some of their truths is that President Eisenhower was a dedicated, conscious agent of the communist conspiracy. And that this Mr. is a, a quote from... Uh, a, from Mr. Welch, from Mr. Welch, who was the head of the John Birch Society. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, during the course of the recitation here, we saw Martin Luther King juxtaposed with a communist school to give the clear and lying impression that Luther King is a communist. In so far as their spokesmen are concerned, I could analyze in depth the evil of comparing the Negro Revolution to which Dr. Bannis adhered to the agrarian reform movement in China, giving the impression that here and now the communists are using the race revolution as the commies did in China a long time ago. The simple fact is that the FBI just recently released a report in which they said, and I quote, the Communist Party does not appear to have instigated these riots. Now for me, the epitome of truth, their kind of truth, were two statements made by a member of the National Council, Dr. Revelo P. Oliver just some weeks ago on the West Coast. And incidentally, he's a teacher at the Illinois. University of Illinois. He said, and it was reported in the press, that 10 days before President Kennedy was assassinated, the American government rehearsed his funeral. He said, too, that the CIA is nothing but an arm of the Russian secret police. That if there is any difference, it's a difference only in bookkeeping. These, indeed, are the kinds of truths that we've come to expect from the John Birch Society and the essential reason that we believe it's the evil that danger on the right tries to say it is.